Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and today we're going to talk about four cars that could be future collectibles. Remember, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button. The more subscribers we get, the better cars we get to review. Hit that notification bell because I post at least three videos a week and a lot of times I do four videos. So without that notification bell, you won't know when I post those videos. Normally, I post three videos a week every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Like and share this channel so our channel can grow. And as always, leave your positive comments below. I respond to each and every comment, so why not comment? All right, so one of our viewers, and forgive me, uh, asked me about the future collectability of four cars. So let's go through them one by one. And uh, one of these cars I don't think is a future collectible, and I'm gonna give you a substitute for that car instead. All right, so the first car is the, the BMW 1 Series M. I've owned one of these cars for six years now. I am the second owner of this Valencia orange car. Real quick history on the BMW 1M. They only sold 740 copies here in the United States. They came in three colors, black, sapphire, alpine, white and Valencia Orange. They were all six-speed manuals, and they were only produced, despite what you see in internet videos, in 2011. There's plenty of educated YouTubers that say 2012 or 2013. No, it's 2011 only. Uh, fully loaded, like my car, base price is like 47,000, 47,500. With all the options which my car has, it was 54,555. So it was within like $5 of my BMW M2. So coincidence? I think not. Uh, Great things about this car is rear drive, hydraulic steering. When I was ordering my M2 in 2016, I was lucky to get one of the first allocations of that car. I actually ordered it in 2015 and took delivery in uh, April 2016. My BMW 1M had gone up in value. I was going to sell the 1M and essentially get a free M2. And uh, when I picked up the M2, it was a great car, but it is not as good as the 1M. The 1M, you tell the difference right away, night and day, driving the difference, hydraulic steering versus electric. And the 1M is just a little crazier. It's got a shorter wheelbase. It's a more nervous car, which is in a good way. If you have a lot of driving skill, you'll like the 1M better. If you're more of a novice driver, I think you'll like the M2 better because anybody can be fast in the M2. 1M can turn a fantastic uh, lap time, and they're very popular. At least they used to be popular at autocrosses, even though they didn't make too many of these cars because they're a great handling car, but you need a lot of scale. It's almost like uh, a 911. There's a learning curve to it. When I lost my job in 2017 and kind of like almost put it up for sale or put feelers out there, most of the offers I got between were between 65 and 70,000. Now my car is a fully loaded car. It's in the signature color of Valencia orange. Black and white seem to sell for less, especially white. Uh, and it only had like 19,000 miles on it. So obviously, there's two kinds of 1Ms. There's 5,000 mile cars and there's 50,000 mile cars. There's not too many that are kind of in between where I am. Uh, the 5,000 mile cars are at AIG and they want 80, 90,000. The 50,000 mile cars are probably a little bit beat up and tracked a lot and you're gonna still pay 50,000 for it. Now, I think that, so people said, oh, the 1Ms have come down or they've held their value. The 1Ms have been pretty steady. They go up about 2 to 3% a year. Let's just say 3% for argument's sake. They're kind of flat right now, so I think time's, now's the time to buy. Cars make their biggest jump when they're 30, 20 years old, and then they usually peak when they're about 30 years old. So the 1M will be the 2021 20, model years coming out now. In the next 12 months or so, we're going to see a million YouTube videos, articles on the 10-year anniversary of the BMW 1M, because since BMW hasn't built a car like that, especially with hydraulic steering and the 1 Series is now defunct here in the United States become the 2 Series so they can never be another replacement. There'll always be a better M2. You got the M2, the M2 Comp, the M2 CS, then there'll be an all new 2 Series, then another M2, M2 Comp, M2 CS, M2 CSL. So the M2, unfortunately, will always depreciate even though it's a fantastic car. So I think we're not gonna see, when these cars are 20 years old, I think they'll be $100,000 cars. But remember, you got 11 years to get there. So I think we'll see a little bit bump uh, when they're 10 years old, I think the, the minimum for these cars will be 60 and the maximum will probably be 75, 80. And then, you know, we'll probably be a little steady or maybe very slow increases. And then when they're 20 years old, 11 years from now, we'll see, we'll see big increases on the car. So the 1M, definitely a future collectible. There's 25,000 E46 M3s. There's 25,000 E90, E92 M3s, 741 Ms. I've owned all those cars and, uh, the 1M, you know, has, has more performance because of that turbocharged engine, certainly, for sure. And uh, it is a little crazier, so it might be even more fun. Uh, though I do love those other cars and have owned those cars. So we'll get to the, so let's get there now. I was gonna do it later, but let's do the E46 M3. The E46 M3 has been climbing in value. If you watch Bring a Trailer, they've been exploding in value. Now, most collectible E46 M3, obviously, 
is going to be a manual transmission coupe. I think if you uh, had an SMG car and swapped it to a manual, certainly people don't want to go through the minutia of doing that. So that'll go up in value too. Not as high as cars that originally came in manual. And people always ask me, well, what about convertibles? Well, I kind of equate that to the 993. So 993 coupes, like my 993 Turbo, doubled in value. The 993 convertibles went up maybe 50%. So if the coupes get high enough, it will pull up the convertibles. So the convertibles, if you like convertibles, certainly would be a good buy right now. You can get them for probably about 10 grand less than the coupes, maybe more than that. If you're, you know, people are asking crazy money for low mileage coupes. Uh, I always wanted a Laguna Seca blue car to replace my Laguna Seca blue coupe manual sunroof delete the black interior that got stolen. But uh, you know, the price is, it's beyond. Like bring a trailer just had one, it was pushing 40 grand for a high mileage one. So forget that. But honestly, now that I have the Mystic Blue, I think I like the Mystic Blue. You're more likely at a Cars and Coffee or a drive to see Laguna Seca Blue than Mystic. Here in the United States, there's 1,800 uh, Laguna Seca Blue cars, only about 700 Mystic Blue cars. So you're actually two and a half times or twice as likely to see a Laguna Seca car. So I love the Mystic Blue. It's a fantastic car. Do I think they're collectible? Yes, I think the market's already shown that. Uh, will they be? Well, the, the lowest mileage manual coupes, sunroof delete, maybe black interior because people don't seem to like the grays. They could be, I don't know that they will be $100,000 cars because I think there's too many of them, 25,000 sold here, but they could certainly top out at maybe 75,000, somewhere that, that range. I think pretty soon or very soon, even the basket case M3s are going to be 30,000 because there's such a huge following for this car. So there's 20, 30 times more E46 M3s than there are BMW 1Ms, but there's you know a lot more people that like E46 M3s, so I think the market is is good for these cars. Now these cars, you know, they're 17 years old, 20 years old, 15 years old, so you're going to sink money into these cars. So your car may go up three or four or five thousand a year, but you may sink two, three, four thousand a year into these cars. So expect to do that unless you put this car away in a garage, heated storage, or something like that, climate controlled storage. It's uh, you're gonna give some of that money back maintaining them, but definitely buy an E46 M3. Every year they're gonna get more and more expensive, so buy it as soon as you can. Uh, the next car, S2000. I think the market's shown that these cars. So I sold my very low mileage S2000 2017, 2018, and the only reason I sold is I, I was unemployed and needed the money. I sold uh, the car at 13,000 miles in 06. So 06, AP2 started in 04. They made a lot of 04s and 05s. They made, most of the AP2s are that, and there's about two thirds of the cars are AP1s. Of the 66,000 made, one third are AP2s approximately. Most of the AP2s are 04s or 05s. Once they got to 06, production numbers went down a lot each year till you got to 09. 06s and 07s are identical, so an 07 is worth more than an 06 because production is less than an 06. But in 2018, I sold my red uh, you know, perfect original paint, all VIN tags, clean Carfax, no rips in the top, nothing. Perfect car to, for 13,000 miles for 28,000. That was top of the market. Bring a Trailer told me my car was pristine and the most I can expect was 24. And that's what they wanted to set the reserve. I didn't want to have a bad day at Bring a Trailer. Sometimes cars sell for a lot. Sometimes they sell for a little. S2000, sometimes they sell for a ton of money. Sometimes they don't. So I didn't want to take a chance. So I... Uh, Sold it privately for that number, and that same car is probably like 35 right now. So the S2000s have really gone up in value. I see, I've seen, I'm um, looking at them now, and I've seen, you know, terrible ones where people want 20, 30,000 on these cars. So S2000 are definitely collectible. They're going to keep going up. Now there's a lot of them, 66,000. So you got to be super particular on these cars. I think you need a clean Carfax. You definitely need all 10 VIN stickers. Those cars will definitely sell for a 20 or 30,000 dollar premium up to an old car. All right, so uh, the S2000s are definitely going to go up. I don't know how high. CRs could be $90,000, $100,000 cars. I don't think it's a ninety dollars or $100,000 driving experience. I think the uh, Honda S2000 is best enjoyed at that twenty five to 30000 mark. I think once you get to like 35000 you really got to keep the miles off it. And I don't know that it's a thirty-five dollars or $40,000 driving experience, even though I've owned a bunch of them. All right, but uh, definitely, I would if you want an S2000, I would buy it sooner than later. And then the fourth car that the subscriber mentioned was the 996 911. So this car is a great car. My first Porsche ever was a 996 C4S 2002. So that gave you, if you see my uh, 911 meet video, there's a C4S in that video. Gave you everything that the 996 Turbo had, Jeremy Clarkson said, except it was the light version. So it gave you the wide body, the sport suspension, uh, the 911 Turbo brakes, 
the 911 turbo, everything except the turbo itself. And new, it was about a $40,000 difference. So the C4S was phenomenal. I tracked mine. I put snow tires, drove it in the winter. I had a baby seat in the back. It was a phenomenal car, and it still is. And they've gone up in value. So I sold mine for like high 20s in 2000. I had that car for six years. It was such a good car. Bought it used in 2006 as a 2002 model. Sold in 2012 for my Cayman S. And uh, that car had depreciated because that's, you know, during the Great Recession period for sure. And I bought it used from... A, doctor who also had a 996 turbo I tried to buy that but couldn't afford it at the time and uh, those cars have gone up in value they're they're in the 30s now a good one I think they even start at 30,000 so 30 35 somewhere in that range I don't know if it's a forty thousand dollar driving experience but I don't think those I think those so that's the C4S so any 996 that could go up in value would be the turbo of the C4S a regular uh, C2 which I think what the viewer was talking about I don't think will ever be a collectible car I think the 993s before it are and I think the 997s after it will be. I think we've seen, especially 997.2 S's go up in value, GT3s, that kind of stuff. Uh, the 996 GT3 certainly, that's kind of, that's probably doubled in price the last uh, five years or so. But a regular 996, I don't think so. Uh, definitely, there was no PDK out then, so if you want one, definitely give you a manual transmission. The substitute car I put in these four would be an E90, E92 M3. I think with the uh, 8,000, over 8,000 RPM redline, V8 stick, hydraulic steering, I would put my money towards that than a 996, even though it's not a Porsche. What Porsche would I get for that price? That's tough. In that price range of a 996, uh, if you have to go 996, I'd go C4S or Turbo. Obviously, the Turbo is going to be a higher price point. All right, guys, that's four cars that are going to appreciate in value. I did this back in 2017, and every car I predicted did go up uh, pretty tremendously. So mark this down, 2020. One good thing, hopefully, that comes out of these years is you can buy these four future collectibles. Thanks again for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.